What's up, guys? I hope you're all doing well and staying safe and cool or warm, depending on what you're trying to be in your area of the world. Uh, July has been a topsy-turvy month, to say the least, and we are seeing some hints on why that's happening. And in my opinion, a lot of this is starting with whales and their behavior and exactly what they're doing with their money in the midst of inflation concerns and uh, obviously stock market woes and various issues in the world right now that are just keeping people from wanting to go, you know, absolutely uber bullish like they were in 2020 and majority of 2021. Um, so we're just going to, going to go over five assets here along with the Sandsheets model that covers whales well to give you guys an update on how it's looking. And for those of you not familiar with these kinds of metrics, a quick tutorial on how they work and, and how you can use them to your advantage. <clears throat> so we're looking here at the Bitcoin price chart along with three tiers of whales, and they're chosen specifically for a reason. The 100 to 1,000 Bitcoin addresses and their percentage of supply held, 1,000 to 10,000 and their percentage, and 10,000 to 100,000 Bitcoins held and their percentage. Uh, these three generally are the ones that, based on history and our analysis, are the ones that carry the most weight in terms of where prices tend to go next. And they don't always happen in real time, which is good. That's exactly why we think and have seen proof of the, this particular metric known as supply distribution or balance of addresses in, within supply distribution being so valuable uh, as an alpha metric. So what we're looking at here, as I said, the pink, red, and yellow lines represent the 100,000, 1,000 to 10,000, 10,000 to 100,000 tiers respectively. The pink line is the smallest of the three, and obviously, it hasn't been looking too good, right? It started way up here. You can see with a little pop-up as I drag my mouse, it's showing that as of six months ago, this tier of addresses cumulatively was holding about 21, 21.02% of the total supply of Bitcoin. And as things move down, uh, this number, of course, gets lower and lower. And where we're at now is down to 20.22. So 0.8% of the supply that was held by this tier no longer does so. Uh, and that's a massive amount of US dollars or whatever currency you trade with or, or have a currency with. Um, it, it essentially means they have had less and less confidence in, the pro in Bitcoin being able to continue rising since the beginning of the year, whether that be for reasons related to them seeing the inflation issue coming, or uh, they simply were profit-taking ever since the November all-time high. Uh, they have been essentially dumping their Bitcoin. And 0.8% uh, is, of course, a ton. You can look at how the pink line has compared to these green bars representing each day in price and closing price uh, from January up until present day. And there's, there's quite a bit of correlation. You can see like they really started dumping arguably a day before uh, this big dump happened in early June, just about a month ago. Um, you know, as prices, even when, when you know, a, a big rebound happened in March, they were already starting to dump. And usually when that happens, when whales are dumping, and you can see that as I get to the red line, it was doing the same thing. When multiple key whale tiers are dumping, it's usually uh, not a promising sign if the price is going up. It means it's going to fall back pretty rapidly. And if I go back to the last year, we can see a, a really good example of this on the true all-time high that happened in early to mid-November. Um, the pink line was already dumping as of about a month before it. The red line, the 1,000 to 10,000 line, was dumping beginning on the 20th, about three weeks before it. And sure enough, right after this all-time high hit, huge, huge fall because it just could not sustain itself without the holdings of the massive addresses um, that are usually propping up the, the asset and allowing it to hold at the levels that it's, it's climbing toward. So zooming back into the past six months here, obviously we know the pink line is going down. 
the red line actually was going up for a bit until mid-February. This was about two weeks before the uh, Ukraine and Russia war happened, and that kind of made the markets go a little haywire. Uh, but they've gone less and less ever since, holding 28.1% or so on February 10th, down to about 26.3% now. So that's a good 1.8% of supply that has been dumped by this tier over the past, uh, what is it, five months. Um, that's about even more than more than twice what the pink tier was dropping collectively, if you're keeping count. That's 2.6% total dumped by these uh, two tiers combined. And then, of course, we have the yellow tier. Um, now, this one is going to be a little more misleading and not as correlative with prices at all. Uh, 10,000 to 100, pretty much any Bitcoin address from 10,000 coins and upward, uh, they generally are going to belong to exchanges. We don't have the data to tell you exactly what the ratio is between how many of these are exchange addresses versus human addresses, and no platform will because, frankly, the anonymity of crypto prevents that full transparency. That said, we know uh, mostly just through correlation analysis, that the yellow line doesn't have nearly the peg to, with the price that the 100 to 1,000 and 1,000 to 10,000 coin uh, tiers have. And you can see quite clearly here when the dump started, you know, from this mini rebound that happened in late March, these, these two tiers, pink and red, were absolutely falling down, but yellow just kept on going up and arguably... Uh, part of the reason is a lot of these addresses were actually getting larger and going into the yellow tiers. It's hard to prove, but either way, we'd much rather keep them in the 100 to 10,000 range because that gives us confidence based on history that the coins, uh, that their behavior in these two tiers um, are likely going to push the price up or down respectively. But they were dumping out yellow line was getting larger. Um, and we can see that there was a ton of zigzagging. And this is typical of exchange addresses where there's suddenly a, a lot of liquidity or not a lot of liquidity going in or out of an exchange. And you see just in single days, you know, they collectively hold 11.9% and then 11.3% just two days later, I mean, or one day later. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that you deal with. But I wanted to illustrate that because there are, I can guarantee, a, a small amount, a handful of actual retail human traders out there uh, that are in this tier and maybe impacting the prices slightly. But more or less, we like to look at the 100 to 1,000 and 1,000 to 10,000. And one final tip before I go on to the other assets, <clears throat> which I'll be much shorter with, you can click on merge here. And you can actually just click on the 100 to 1,000 and 1,000 to 10,000, hit confirm, and that will automatically combine. And you can see they were holding 48.57 down to 46.51 collectively in terms of their percentage of the supply. Now, if you want to compare it, we could even go 100 to 100,000, hit confirm, and you can see the slight differences going on. I'd argue that the, this really proves well that the just the 100 to 10,000 range without the 10 to 10K to 100K included served as better alpha here because you can see how the drop happened a couple days before the big fallout in early May, whereas the red line was just staying flat even past the big dump. Um, you know, this one's more a toss up. I'd still say the pink line predicted this dump better by their continued dump. And as of now, since I promised some updates, if we trust this pink line, which we at Santiment do, uh, it looks like the dumping hasn't stopped going into the uh, the uh, next Fed decisions and discussions that are going to be happening on the uh, pretty much over the next two weeks uh, here in the U.S. So keep that in mind. Uh, not the greatest sign, but certainly not investment advice to just dump all of your coins just because this pink line is going down. We've seen whales be wrong plenty of times. And it's also certainly not the only dictator of future price movement. All right, so that's a little on Bitcoin. Now let's do a little more rapid fire on some other key top 10, top 20 assets or so, because I included Matic in this. 
So here with Ethereum, we've included the 1,000 to 10,000, 10,000 to 100,000, and 100,000 to 1 million Ethereum wallets. Uh, just like Bitcoin, so I essentially moved everything up a notch because Ethereum is uh, about what's the what's maybe five to seven percent of the price of Bitcoin. So logically, if you're calculating in USD, you need to go up a few tiers. Uh, in this case, I just went up. I scaled all three of them up one tier uh, to represent the same uh, general range of millionaire, 10 millionaires, 100 millionaires. There, I think there's even some billionaires in here when you're really talking about the 1 million um, coin addresses and Ethereum still being above 1,000. So that means if you're right around a million Ethereum, you've got a billion dollars worth of Ethereum or a little bit more than that. Um, anyways, so again, the pink and red lines, the 1,000, 10,000, 10,000, 100,000 tiers are the ones that are going to have a little more alpha. And the outlook actually looks a little bit better here. Um, the red line has been rebounding since early June um, with a lot of volatility, mind you, and the latest is another downswing. Meanwhile, the pink line really started to make its move just about two weeks and change ago. All right, now moving on to XRP. Uh, this is obviously, many of you may have polarized opinions about XRP because of its centralized nature. Um, essentially, it's uh, almost three quarters of its supply is held by 10 million plus addresses, uh, 10 million XRP plus addresses going on here. And the orange and blue lines represent the smaller tiers, 100K to 1 million in blue and a million to 10 million in orange. And all things considered, I would argue that the orange line on its own likely has the most alpha based on the patterns you can see with the dumping and prices going down and then the accumulation and prices soaring. Uh, the brown line in this case, I think the centralized nature is a bit exaggerated. It's, it's mostly just dispersing to smaller addresses over time. And yes, there are many XRP that are being uh, newly created all the time, but we are looking at the percentage of the supply, so that shouldn't matter so much. But yeah, all things considered, it looks like ever since early May, a little over a month ago, we started to see a pretty big accumulation from the orange line, which is a pretty good sign if and when Bitcoin starts to stabilize out and altcoins have a chance to uh, begin to surge again. So pretty good look here for XRP. Moving on to Chainlink, I've got a whole bunch of different tiers highlighted. I'm going to simplify it for just a moment and look at the 100 to 1K, which is really starting to move up as of the second week of May, <coughs> along with the orange and red that are also doing the same thing right around the same time. So these all started to really go up high at once. Now, if we go up a little bit to the 100K to 1 million, now we're starting to get into exchange addresses because we're talking about addresses that are holding uh, 600K all the way up to 6 million or so at the time of this uh, recording. And that's a lot. Um, you can also notice that even through all the volatility, the yellow was always kind of just staying the same, relatively speaking, and not reacting to price as much as these other tiers. So that's a telltale sign that there's a lot of exchange addresses in here. And the same goes for the blue line, which is just constantly going up, and the brown line, which is constantly going down, because just like XRP, this is kind of just the distribution tier, which is slowly going down as other tiers accumulate more link over time. Now, it's interesting. You can look at you know, the 10 to 100, 1 to 10, all of these small ones, and they've all really started to taper off and flatline as of, I guess you could say, February and March, and that's because the prices have just dropped so much that the smaller addresses and traders just are not as interested in accumulating uh, when the price is going backwards. And small traders tend to buy when things are already up high and sell when things are going down. So makes sense there. But all things considered, those key tiers for Link do seem to be going up as of the past five, six weeks or so. And then the last asset I wanted to look at is Matic. 
we can see that the key tier here is probably the 10K all the way up to 1 million tier. And they really started to skyrocket and, and accumulate rapidly at the very end of April. And finally, I wanted to take a quick look at our whale transactions sand sheets model. Now, this is incomplete at the moment uh, during this hour. Sometimes whale transaction data takes a while to compile, but you do see that there are several assets that have compiled. Um, in the green are real-time um, current four-hour bars based on their projections. So if we're two hours in, it's projecting what it'll look like in the four-hour interval. So it's sort of making some implied estimates based on what's come in in the first two hours. We have the yellow bar, which is four to eight hours if there isn't enough data in the current bar yet. And then we have the red bar, which is more like eight to 16 hours out um, and seeing what the whale transactions look like there. And all of these percentages are comparing versus the average for uh, whale transactions um, and the amount that we can expect in a four hour time interval. So if it's above 50%, that means it's above average and we're seeing way more than usual. If it's below, we're seeing way less. Uh, so for example, DYDX here is having uh, a lot of whale transactions which are deemed as $100,000 or more right now compared to usual. Um, Serum's another one where at least on the four to eight hour time scale, they were getting a lot of whale transactions. And here it might be, there might be a reason because the, the price is up 37% over the past week, whereas most of the prices, as we can see in the gray bars here, are showing negative returns. So that might help uh, direct you toward checking out Serum to see what's going on there um, and find out whether there's accumulation or dumping right now and what other metrics are uh, popping up that might be applicable for um, investment decisions when it comes to Serum. Now we also see these stars here. I mentioned supply distribution moving up and down by key whales. This will tell you right here based on these stars, this yellow star is telling you how much it moved up or down in terms of percentage within its three month range of what the high versus low is from those key whales and how much they've been holding. So long story short, if it's above 0%, the yellow star uh, in, indicates that they have been accumulating in the past 24 hours. The blue star shows that um, in the case of Serum, over the past seven days, this is more of a midterm time frame, they've been actually dumping quite a bit compared to that three-month range of high versus low in terms of how much they've held. And then the purple line, or purple star, shows that Serum would also be uh, below average right now compared to its three-month uh, complete average. So over the past three months, where it's sitting right now in comparison to its three months is 35% lower than what the normal amount of supply held is over, over that time frame. So hopefully that makes sense. This, this whole model was put together by me with the idea of trying to get as much information as possible without having it become completely cluttered. And um, I think it accomplishes it that well. It, it accomplishes it well and, and allows you to really um, quickly have an asset catch your eye and say, oh, there's an outlier. Maybe I should go and investigate what's going on there. And uh, that's what you know many people who use this model do. Um, if you're a Sandbase Pro member, you can simply go to file, make a copy um, in the link that's provided in the description, and you can instantly uh, plug in the data for this. If you are interested in using, you can, using this model, you can open a Sandbase uh, account and open a one week trial and you'll have a temporary API account that'll let you plug right in and see what whales are doing at any given moment. It can be tremendously useful to help you uh, make objective and um, educated investment decisions. So all that said, I hope this was helpful. Uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you all again on Friday on our This Week in Crypto call. And in the meantime, stay safe.